Urban EDC has created an exclusive edition of the Raylite Titanium Pineapple Mini Flashlight by milling a Saigaiha wave pattern into the body tube, as you can see here. It's available in a bead blasted finish or stone wash finish like I have here. And thanks to Urban EDC for sending this to me to review and show everyone. Links to their website are below in the description. And while you're in the description, check out my links to all my social pages too. A little history lesson here first on the Saigaiha pattern. It first appeared sometime in the 6th century in Japan, and it symbolizes waves, power, and resistance, which are key elements of the Japanese culture. It's also come to symbolize surges of good luck. And in recent years, the pattern has been increasingly popular in the EDC community, and I think it's a classic, elegant pattern, something that could be used daily or on special occasions while at the same time adding functionality because it does add some grip to the flashlight, pen, or knife. This ties in also nicely with Urban EDC's recent brand identity update to their Compass logo, which now incorporates the Seigaiha Waves too. It's so a little bit on the design of the light and the function. As far as the light goes itself here, it's mostly the standard Raylite Pineapple Mini that I've taken a look at in the past, I have several. I've got copper, brass, a couple other titanium models, a couple aluminum models, and this uh, Timascus model here, which is probably my favorite. I carry the pineapple minis frequently due to their slim size, lightweight, and appealing tint. They provide a good amount of output for normal EDC tasks. Nothing too extreme, but uh, very functional. A lot more than your cell phone does. So for those unfamiliar with the light, let's go over a few of the key points here. You've got a button in the rear here, which is where you turn the light on and off and change modes. And it is a reverse a clicky switch. It's got a spot for a 1.5 by six millimeter tritium in the slot there. And I can show uh, what that looks like here. And if you're unfamiliar, tritium is uh, slightly radioactive and will glow on the dark on its own. So that's kind of cool. The uh, clip sits here below the tail cap and you need that spacer in there if you you don't want a tail clip, they do uh, make a spacer you can put in there instead, or you can 3D print one. The clip here is pretty good. It is um, deep carry, and they have revised the design here to allow more material to fit up in here to allow it to deep carry easier. It works pretty good in my experience. The body tube here on the Seigaiha model adds texture in your hand and it feels good. It's not too aggressive on the skin, but it is more aggressive on your pockets than a standard pineapple. So not only does it look good, but it adds function too. Threads here are finely cut. And on my example, they could have a little bit more grease, but that's pretty easy to fix with some super lube grease. And you can see the driver down in there. I'll insert an exploded view of the light that I've done just to kind of illustrate what it looks like all taken apart. Uh, the head here is fairly plain. There's just a little bit of milling there. At the front, the uh, bezel is flat. It's not crenulated at all. You've got a glass lens in there that's anti-reflective coated and you've got an orange peel reflector with the LED there down at the center. The stonewashed titanium model here with the clip and battery weighs in at 1.37 ounces, so pretty light. Urban EDC lists this light as having a Nishit 219B LED, but based on the multiple Raylite pineapple minis I have and some of the modifications I've done, I'm certain this model here has the Nishit 519A, and that's a good thing, and you can kind of see the comparison here on the left is the 519A, and on the right is the 219B. Visually, they look different. The other note is the uh, Raylite's 29Bs tend to be around 4500 Kelvin, and this 519A is closer to 4000, so a little bit warmer. This updated LED is a good thing in my opinion, as the 519A has more output than the 219B, still has a nice high CRI, and has a little bit of a rosy tint, which I prefer myself, as do many enthusiasts. It's the most popular LED at the moment due to its great characteristics, and this is a great way to try one if you haven't already. On my Opal Lightmaster Pro, I measured the light on high with a lithium ion battery and got uh, 3896 Kelvin at 97 CRI. DUV here was slightly orange with no green in the beam, which I like. On high, there is PWM, but it's very fast, and the beam profile here with the uh, 519A is a larger hot spot, and this is partially due to the refined reflector I think as well. It's a nice beam pattern for a non-TIR EDC light in my opinion. Okay here are the night shots for the Raylite Pineapple Mini the Sangaiha edition. This is running a Nisha 519 LED. Got it in mode 2 here. Not a ton of light. Bumping up to level 3. This is a decent amount of light. Probably I don't know 50 lumens I'd guess somewhere in there. 
And here is high mode. This is about 280 lumens. This is more than what Urban EDC will rate the light for. And that's what I get in my lumen tube. And we can see my tree here in my front yard. Nice big tree, but you can see this thing throws for a decent amount for an EDC light. This is great to, you know, find something under the couch or just general lighting. It's not going to be your light you use in a disaster for an extended period of time, but for a lot of general uses for a flashlight, this works great for that. So what I did want to do is show you the difference between high CRI. So this is a high CRI LED. It's about 4000 Kelvin if I remember right. 96 CRI. You can see the nice colors on the tree here. Let me switch off to a different light to kind of show you the different tints. So here is another Raylight Mini that I've got. This is a Nisha 219B LED. It's about 40 to 50 lumens less just because it's a less efficient LED. This one's slightly cooler, probably a more neutral tone. And you can still see the oranges and reds here nicely. Lastly, I've got an Olight i5T. This is making about 100 lumens less. This is a cool white LED and a non-high CRI. And you can see just a huge difference in the color of the tree here. And even if we're using it out in front, and remember this is on high, it is quite a bit different from the ray light that we looked at previously. Still functional, but to me, this is a lot less appealing than the high CRI. And one last time here, here is the Raylight Pineapple Mini Singahai Edition. A lot more light, nicer tones too, in my opinion, and high CRI. Great little light, wonderful little EDC. So let's talk about the outputs here. While the light will run on a AAA alkaline or nickel metal hydride battery, I prefer to run them on 10440 batteries, and that's what the light ships with as well. For me, this is the only way I ever run my ray lights. Performance is quite a bit more, and you do trade runtime slightly, but it's it's not too bad. And like I said, this isn't a light you're probably going to use for extended periods of time, just due to its size and, and limited runtime. So with a 10440 battery, I got the following outputs in the default mode, high 280 lumens, medium 65 lumens, low 16 lumens, and moon mode, I'm guessing is just one, maybe two lumens. Uh, my lumen tube at these low ranges just isn't accurate. With a AA or nickel metal hydride, I got the following. High was about 60 lumens and medium was about 35 lumens. Low and moonlight modes were below those and I just didn't feel confident in the numbers that I got there. I had a little bit of trouble with my heat and runtime data here, just wasn't done in time for filming. So I will insert graphs of what those look like and let them speak for themselves. Overall, from experience, it's a decent runtime and uh, nothing concerning there for size of the light. The UI here is basic and pretty easy to use. The light does have a reverse clicky switch, which means you must press it on for it to come on. And then once it's on, you can half press to go up in modes. By default, the light does not have memory mode, but you can turn it on. The light is programmable into four preset modes that vary in output from the uh, vary the output of low, medium, high outputs. And the fourth mode adds a strobe option in there too. Raylight has some directions on their website and I'll try to link to some of them that I made when I gave the minis as a gift. This is an area for improvement for Raylight and something I think they should add is directions inside the package. Make sure to uh, charge that included battery as well. That is a common problem you see occasionally people unhappy with the lights or it quits working and they turns out they've just forgotten to change charge the battery. And as a side note, you will need to supply your own charger. My current recommendations for for these small batteries are the Vape Cell S4 Plus and Xstar VC4 Plus or VC4SL, both of which I've done reviews on in the past and you can find here on my channel. My final thoughts are, I have eight different Raylite Mini Pineapples and it's no secret I'm a fan of them. The titanium Saigaiha metal version here in the middle from Urban EDC is visually really nice. I find the uh, Seigaiha patterns appealing and I like the history behind it as well. As someone who works in technology, it looks like a Wi-Fi symbol, so that's fun too. Functionally, the new light is nice too. It's got a surprising amount of grip in the hand with that new milling pattern. And while it does grip in my pocket well in my jeans, the new pattern almost grips too much. I'd expect it to wear the inside of the pocket material more so than other Raylite mini pineapples that I have. Like I mentioned before, this isn't a light that you're going to take camping and use for hours at a time. Uh, during like a natural disaster or something, but it functions really well as a small EDC light that you'd carry in your pockets 
and have with you for small daily tasks. It works a lot better than like your cell phone LED does. Things like, you know, finding the lock on a door in the dark, not tripping over something as you walk inside a dark house or out into a parking lot or something like that. Finding something that's dropped on the floor, under the couch, in the car, that type of stuff. I even used it to find the dog in the uh, backyard as on high. It produces a decent amount of light and my backyard isn't super large. I, like I said, I find myself carrying the pineapple minis frequently due to their small size, good output, and LED tents. And remember, the other big benefit here of the Segaiha version is that it comes with a Nisha 519A LED too. So it's got more output than the older pineapple minis that you might already have, but still retain a nice high CRI and a pleasant warmer tint. It's a great way to try what's arguably the LED of the year that enthusiasts are loving almost universally. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this version. And if you've got one or are planning to get one, I'd love to know about that too. As always, I appreciate you guys liking these videos, subscribing to the channel, and sharing them with your friends, and I'll catch you on the next review. Thanks for watching.